So I love this guy. I want to lick his bald head. Please welcome Mr. Jeff Pierce. <laughs> All right, blind onion. Well, I'm glad to be here because if I wasn't, I'd be at home with my kids. <laughs> yeah, I have two kids. My oldest, the son, he's 15 now. So is it the age where I had to sit him down and have the talk? The one where I explained to him that his mom washes his socks? Uh. Yeah. We were already dealing with the issue of long showers. But I don't get on him for that because I'm not a hypocrite. <laughs> now, I still take long showers. Now it's for different reasons. Hopefully he's in there trying to build the stamina. Now when I take a long shower, it's because that's the only place my wife and kids leave me the fuck alone. And I'm an adult, so I'm allowed to take a beer in there with me. Sometimes I'll take a shower so long, I'll piss twice while I'm in there. The biggest effect being a parent has had on me is the sex life. After she popped out a couple of kids, everything came to a screeching halt. I kind of regressed back to my single days, those days when I'd masturbate a lot. The only difference now is for cleanup, I use her socks instead. You know, out of spite. Yeah, before we had kids, I was a raging heterosexual. Now, I identify as what I call a nonosexual. Because she's always like, no, no. Yeah, being a nonosexual means I agreed to exclusively try to have sex with one non-responsive shrivel and dried out vagina the rest of my life. Well, that's how I picture it. She doesn't want me to use it anymore. And some of you might be thinking, well, if that's the case, you can say the same thing about your penis. Well, you'd be wrong, because almost daily I moisturize it with lotion for about 10 minutes. And trust me, it's responsive. You know, as a parent, I have turned into one of those people that says things like, kids today have it so easy. But in my defense, I was in my mid-20s when it became common for somebody to have a cell phone on them. Like, we didn't get internet at my place until I was in my late teens. So I guess that makes the biggest difference from my generation and my kids, the ability to find porn. And yeah, now they can find anything instantly. They can be watching full-on hardcore banging by the click of a thumbnail. Back when I first got into the self-pleasure business, it was magazines and the occasional Cinemax free preview weekend. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> also had a little bit of the public access, but that shit's always weird. Um, when we did get internet, it was dial-up. Remember that bullshit? Sometimes it would take three or four minutes just to connect. And then if you were lucky enough to find porn, it was pictures. There was no videos back then. And those pictures took forever to load, all pixelated and shit. You'd be looking at blurry squares like, is that a nipple? <laughs> Fuck it, it's a nipple. And then you're done before the first picture even loaded. <laughs> As the parent of a couple of teenagers, it is hard to watch them get excited about things because we know their trends and they're gonna go away, either that or it's a scam. Like avocado toast, that's a scam. I went to a restaurant recently, first thing on the menu, avocado toast, $12. That's bread they toasted and smeared avocado on for 12 bucks. And people buy it, that's why they sell it for that price. Avocado toast is something you're supposed to make at home when you're broke and all you have is some bread and a four day old avocado. You don't go to the hot dog stand and then ask the guy to wrap up a piece of white bread. That's what you do at home when tomorrow is payday. Six years ago, if you went to a diner and asked for avocado toast, the waitress would have looked at you weird and said, I'll bring you some toast and cider guacamole. What you do from there is up to you. It's your dollar fifty. <laughs> but it didn't get me curious as to what made it popular, why people started wanting it. So I looked it up. And this is true. They link it to an episode of that Kardashian show. Yeah, apparently she was on there eating it and talking about how delicious it was. And suddenly everybody wanted it. 
Well, guess what else she put in her mouth on camera and said, mm. Yeah, Ray J's cock. I remember when that video came out. I don't remember a sudden surge of people wanting to suck dick. Some influencer she is. But that trend will go away too, I think. Most of them do. That's why it is hard to watch them get wound up over things like avocado toast or NFTs. But I don't look down on them for it. I mean, my generation thought the Sony Discman was going to take over the world. Hell, we used to dance to a song called Rico Suave. Some of you remember it. We even had our version of the cryptocurrencies. They call them Beanie Babies. <laughs> yeah, if you don't know what they are, they're little beanbag stuffed animals, and people went fucking nuts for them. Grown adults would swarm stores and fight each other for these things. Then they would take them home and stash them because they thought they were going to make them millionaires. Now you can see bedrooms full of them on any episode of Hoarders. You know, overall, I do get along with the younger generations pretty well. My only beef is with the millennials because they like to spend a lot of time claiming responsibility for things they have nothing to do with. Like my favorite millennial claim, we invented eating ass. No, you didn't. We've been doing it forever. We even have a proper name for it. We don't call it eating ass like savages. We perform analingus like a civilized human. It's always been around. We just have enough self-respect that we don't go yell about it in TikTok. Now, why do you think your dad only kissed you on the top of your head? It's because he tongue punched your mom's fart box. But as much as I complain, I am grateful that I grew up and went through young adulthood when I did. Because it was before everybody had a goddamn phone or a phone with a camera on it to record all the stupid shit you were doing. And trust me, I did some stupid shit. Like my kids are never gonna know about the time I went out to the desert with my buddies and took peyote and then proceeded to barricade myself in a tent and cry for 12 hours because I thought the cacti were human sized snakes trying to eat me. And luckily, I'll never have to explain to them why I pissed in a hot tub from the balcony. And the four people sitting in it didn't think it was funny. <laughs> you know, now, some of my friends now, they tell me that they use their phones in the incognito mode to watch porn. I don't. I don't watch porn on my phone at all because I heard a long time ago that no matter what you do, porn will cause viruses. And I hate having to get a new cell phone. I don't mind buying a new laptop every once in a while. I don't even go through the process of clearing out my computer. If something ever happened where the government seized my shit and went through my search history, there's nothing too shocking. They'd probably say, well, it looks like he's into chubby Asians and women his own age. And I assume my FBI agent already gave him that intel. And I don't use it for porn, but I do use the incognito mode. I use it to find out what the hell my kids are saying. It'd be way more embarrassing for me if they went through my Google history and saw things like, what is bussin'? <laughs> well, I had to look it up, because whenever they say it, they're not talking about going to school, and I thought that's what it was. Or it'll be like, what does that mean when my kid says epic? I always thought it meant something grand or amazing. And then I had this conversation with my daughter. She goes, what's for dinner? I tell her, spaghetti. But this time I'm making it because last time your mom overcooked the pasta a little bit. No big deal. Well, my daughter responds with, oh yeah, that was epic. And all I could do was stare at her and think, I don't think that means what you think it means. <laughs> but to be sure, I pull up my phone in incognito mode. Turns out, she's right. Apparently now, all epic means is, I remember that. <laughs> They have all kinds of phrases they use nowadays and that's something totally different back in my day. One time she came out of her room wearing some horrible outfit. I was like, what the hell are you wearing? And she goes, respect the drip. <laughs> well, according to Google, that means her style. But 25 years ago, that meant your fun parts had discharge. You need to go to a doctor and get a shot of penicillin. Respect the drip. Nowadays, 
guys my age, it means you stand at the urinals a little bit longer. So you don't dribble on your pants when you put that bad boy away. You respect the drip. All right, you guys, that's my time. Thank you. Yeah, keep it going for Jeff Pierce. Hell yeah.